Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I will talk about four things. Number one is the new features in QPR1 Beta 3 on my Pixel 9 Pro XL. Number two, some hidden features from the previous QPR1 betas that I never mentioned before. Number three, some extra hidden features from the stable version of Android 15. And finally, I will talk about the performance, stability, and the bug fixes of QPR1 Beta 3 and why I think this build is worth the update. So without further ado, let's jump in. Before starting, let me remind you about the Wallpapers by In-Depth Tech Reviews app. If you like any of the wallpapers I use, you will find them right here. The Google Play Store download link is in the description, which will give you lifetime access to all the wallpapers for only $2 and I publish 12 new wallpapers per week. And now let's get back to the video. Let's start with the new features in QPR1 Beta 3. And the first change is related to the Pixel 9 models. If you remember in my Pixel 9 Pro XR review, I talked about the misaligned status bar icons with the camera cutout because it's now bigger. But Google did fix this problem by shifting the icons down and now everything is perfectly centered with the camera. But unfortunately, when you swipe down to access the quick settings, the issue is still there and the icons are slightly higher than inside apps. So I hope to see a similar fix in the quick settings as well. And there are a couple of changes related to the home screen. On the left, I have QPR1 Beta 2 on the 8 Pro and here I have Beta 3. So when I tap and hold on the home screen at the same time, you will notice that Beta 3 is slightly slower in showing the overlay menu. The second change is in the themed icons. As you see here, I'm using the exact same wallpaper and I'm setting the colors to default, but you will see a difference in how the icons look on each version. In QPR 1 Beta 3, it's a little bit brighter instead of the darker one on QPR Beta 2, and I'm using light theme on both. And here's how they look in dark theme. The archived apps also got a new look with Beta 3. On the left, you will see a bigger icon on top of the app icon itself, and it's grayed out. While on Beta 3, the app icon looks exactly the same, but you will see a very tiny archive icon next to the app name, and both work exactly the same as before. And the last change is a minor visual tweak. When you go to settings and then connected devices, connection preferences, NFC, now it shows the actual phone model in the NFC graphical representation instead of a generic phone like before, and this is on QPR Beta 2. So these are the new features in QPR 1 Beta 3. Now let's talk about some hidden features from the previous QPR 1 Betas that I didn't mention before. The first one is the new widgets animation. So for example, when I open YouTube Music and go back to the home screen, you will see this new bouncy animation when I quit the app like this. But this new animation doesn't apply to the second row of widgets. It's only available for the first row of widgets on your home screen. So when I switch places between the widgets like this and then try the same in Google Home, you will see now that the animation matches what we have got with YouTube Music, but now YouTube Music doesn't do the same thing. It only happens if the widget is in the top row like this, and you will notice the same with the calendar widget, and this is how it looks. The second change is related to the system-wide search. So when you go to the home settings and then search settings, you will see a new item here called control search results. And when you go inside, it will allow you to choose what apps to include in your search results. You can choose between contacts, settings, play store, pixel tips, clock, and wallet. Plus you have the ability to turn off something called before searching. It says here, show history and activity based on device suggestions which is something you can turn on or off right now. Now let me show you some hidden features in the stable version of Android 15 that you can also enjoy on QPR1 Beta 3. The first one is under settings and then notifications. And here you will find a new section called sync across devices, which includes dismiss notifications across pixel devices. Tapping on it will take you to a page where it shows all the Google accounts you have on your device and a toggle to turn the feature on or off. If the feature is activated, when you dismiss a notification on one device, it will automatically disappear from the other, but you need to make sure that both devices are using the same Google account and both are connected to a Wi-Fi network. But unfortunately, the feature seems to be broken for now because I tried it many times and nothing happens when I dismiss a notification on one device, so I'm not sure if it's a bug or 
Google is still rolling out the feature. The second one is called Hold to Cast. This feature will allow you to cast media from your phone to your Pixel tablet by bringing both devices close to each other like this, and you can find it under your settings, Google services, all services, and then cast options, and here you will find Hold to Cast. When you turn on the toggle, the feature will work, and it says here your devices must be on the same private Wi-Fi network to cast, and not all media apps work with this feature. Currently, it's only supported with Spotify and YouTube Music, and it works with all Pixel models with an ultra-wide band chip. I also found a small tweak under settings, and then sound and vibration, and then media, and here you will see that the show media recommendations is now called show assistant media recommendations and the description says based on your activity. And lastly, if you own any of the Pixel 9 models, now you can see the Pixel Satellite SOS feature under settings and then safety and emergency and then Pixel Satellite SOS. That's where you can activate the feature, but unfortunately it's not available where I live. But if you want to check the available locations, you can tap on this link and it says here it's only available in the US except Hawaii and Alaska. So these are all the new features I wanted to show you. Now let's talk about why QPR1 Beta 3 is better than the stable version of Android 15. The first reason is the animations. From the very first moment you interact with the device, you will feel that everything looks much better. When you open and close apps, the widgets animations, either the new or the old one, the haptic feedback you get when you tap and hold on the quick setting styles, the scrolling, and so on. So it looks much more refined when compared to the stable version and it will give your phone a fresh new look. The second reason is the battery life. A couple of days ago, I published a video about the worst battery life of Android 15 when compared to Android 14 on the 9 Pro XL, but after installing QPR1 Beta 3, now I'm getting a better battery life. So as an example, when I show you the battery usage, you will see here that I have 4 hours and 9 minutes of screen on time and still have 55% battery remaining. I'm using my phone exactly the same way, so I'm expecting to see better battery life with this build and these are the apps I used. So I will keep you updated with more numbers in the future, but my initial impressions is the battery life of QPR1 Beta 3 is better than the stable version of Android 15. The third reason is the performance and the stability. To me, QPR1 Beta 3 feels snappier than the stable version in the scrolling, closing and opening apps, and also the RAM management. I don't have anything to prove it, but this is just based on using the two versions uh, back to back. I feel that QPR1 Beta 3 is better. Plus, we have a long list of bug fixes with this build. I did experience some of these issues with Android 15, but they got fixed with QPR1 Beta 3. So if you want to go through them yourself, you can pause the video to check them out. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new features I wanted to show you. Please let me know in the comments if you spotted any hidden feature in Android 15 or QPR1 Beta 3 that I missed to mention. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.